Hey guys, this is Eddie. How you going? Uh, welcome to another games programming tutorial. Uh, last lesson you learned how to make the bug follow you around. And uh, this lesson we go one step beyond that and now we have multiple bugs on the screen chasing you around. So have a look at this game here. Uh, you. In the last lesson we only had one bug but now there are three bugs and they're all chasing you around. And each time they hit you uh, their positions will be randomly decided and uh, they'll go back and while you go back to the beginning and um, obviously the goal is still to get the blue gem so uh, start a new game so these three bugs are chasing me around while I'm trying to get to the gym so uh, just makes it a little bit harder having three bugs um, so as you can see my score is increasing and then when the bug hits me their positions get reset while I go back to the top left and I still have two lives and so on so today basically we're going to talk about how to have multiple enemies and uh, you'll see that um, the three enemies, the three bugs um, are pretty much just still one object um, except I put them all in one array and I, and I uh, do the same uh, actions to the bugs uh, every time the timer ticks so uh, basically that's pretty useful for having multiple enemies is just to put them all in a array so let's have a look and see the programming so before you started this tutorial hopefully you would have seen all of the visual basic tutorials and you would have done tutorial number 11 which was on arrays so have a look uh, at the beginning of the program here public class form 1 so all of these variables uh, have a scope that spans throughout the program that so that means you can refer to these variables anywhere in the program and have a look at the uh, ready I mean the bug array variable which is in uh, an array with three uh, an array of size three now with arrays uh, the first cell index actually starts at zero so when you declare an array with size three it actually means there is there are four slots in the array okay so I have an array of four slots and uh, they're of the type picture box so they're all going to be picture box objects uh, in the array so how am I going to use this array well firstly I'm going to populate the array with my three bug objects so if you have a look at the bugs what's happening is that um, they all have a tag called bug right not the name not the name of the object but the tag property of each of these bugs has a tag property of bug so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna populate this array called bug array with these picture box objects so if you go down to the uh, form start event so whatever is in the form load event sorry not start whatever is in this event are things that will be executed at the beginning of the program when the form loads so if you have a look I have a dimension sorry an object declared as an object so it's called obj declared as an object and you'll see why I have done this in a second and I also have a variable i called i which is an integer 
and it starts with zero. So we have this timer one dot start. That's just for um, starting the timer. We had this in the last tutorial, and now we're going to add the code that says for each object that is on the screen right now. So that's what this code says for each object in me dot controls. Right. So every time there is an object in the controls of this form so me dot controls that this property this object contains all of these controls so this is like an array itself me dot controls right it basically is a collection of all the controls that are on our form all of the objects um, picture box, labels, whatever. So we're using a for loop, so we're saying that for each object we're going to run this code. Now, if the type of the object is a picture box, so that means we're only dealing with these five things here. Now, if the object is a picture box and the object dot tag is a bug. So, if the object is a picture plus, if the object is a picture box, plus the tag of the object is a bug, then we're going to then we're going to add it to the bug array. And so, obviously, it's not going to touch this one because my main character it doesn't have a tag and my blue gem does not have a tag so the only ones that will have a bug tag are these three objects at the bottom so these three objects at the bottom they will, they will be added to my bug array and uh, so initially the i uh, index variable starts with zero so every time there is a bug object I add it to my array and I plus one to the variable I um, so that it's gonna add the next one at the next position in my array so basically it's gonna populate my array at index 0 1 and 2 because there are there are three bugs so the first bug is going to be bug array 0 and the second bug is going to be bug array bracket 1 and the second array the third array is going to be bug bug array bracket 2 right because 0 bug array bracket 0 is going to be the first um, the first object in my array and so the next thing I'm going to change is that when um, how I want the bugs to chase my chase my character. So when the timer ticks, um, I'm also going to make use a for loop for i equals zero to two, right? Because there are only three bugs: zero, one, and two. That's the three bug array positions containing the bugs I'm going to use the chase function and I'm going to call the chase function on the bug array and the boy okay bug array at the ith position so starting with 0 to 1 to 2 the bug will chase the boy every time the timer ticks so this is going under the timer one tick um, event handler Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is what do we do when the bugs collide with my uh, character. And so what I have done is I have declared a, a variable called collided. And initially it's going to be false. So I declare this every time the timer ticks. There's a collided uh, variable um, that's going to be initially false and then I'm going to check for 
collision between the boy, the, my main character, and the bug. And if they do collide, then my collided variable will turn true. So notice how I use a for loop again because there are more than one bug. So I'm cycling through my bug array and uh, starting from index 0 to index 2, I'm checking for collision between that object in the array and my main character, boy. And on top of that for loop, you'll see this other variable that I have created called ready. And basically what it does is initially the ready variable is an integer of a thousand. And every time the timer ticks, ready is going to be subtracted by 10. Now notice how the timer is ticking every 10 milliseconds. So that means a thousand milliseconds is going to be gone in one second, in one whole second. So when I play the game, initially if I just touch the box straight away, it's not going to collide. So basically the ready variable gives me a one second lag time when the game starts. So if I collide with the bug straight away, it's going to let me off and not not subtract my score. However, um, after the ready variable, after the thousand milliseconds is gone, is subtracted, then it's going to check for my um, collision. And if they do collide, the collided variable will turn true. And if the collider variable is true, then we're going to move all the bugs to a random position. And uh, so here is another function that I have created for this tutorial. So if you have a look at assign random position, the function I've just created, basically what it does is whatever input variable I use in this function, it's going to generate a random number and uh, it's gonna it's gonna put the the object in a random position. And notice I use by ref again for the uh, for the input variable declaration, right? Because I want the variable I want the object itself to be passed into the function not just a value but the act object itself so I can change the position of the object inside the function and now what I'm gonna do is uh, so when when the bug collides with my uh, my my boy object um, the collided variable turns true here and if the collided variable is true then I assign a random position to the bugs subtract one to the lives display the new lives score on the screen move the boy back to the original position and if the number of lives is equal to zero then I stop the timer I message the user letting them know the game is over and I change the collided variable back into false alright for the next game so I think that's all of the program that I have done for this notice how I've started commenting as well um, just so that you know by the end when this program gets really big um, people will understand what this whole program is doing um, so that's about it I uh, hope you can figure this out if you can't feel free to ask me any questions okay see you guys later